looking back along life's winding road to the old familiar markers of the mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than I can explain. There's no other way to tell you than to say God's been good in my life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. Though I've had my share of hard times, by my side he's always stood through it all. God's been good. Times are playing, I can see. I've cried some bitter tears, but I felt his arms around me as I faced my I've had more gains than losses, and I've known more joy than hurt. As His grace rolls down upon me, so undeserved, God's been good in my By my side, he's always stood through it all. God's been good. God has been my father, my savior, and my friend. His love was my beginning, and his love will be my end. I could speak. To tell you everything he is. But the best way I could say it is simply this God's been so good in my life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. And though I've had time by my side he's always stood through it all God's been good
times, Lord, as troubles brought me to my knees, I just came to talk with you, Lord. I have no selfish motive in mind, I just want to thank you for all Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, I believe it is. Corinthians chapter number 4. Well, we wound up with a pretty good little crowd, and we're glad to see you. Thank God for you being here. Prayer meeting tonight. We'll say a few words to be brief, won't be long. Chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Everybody's found the place. Okay. Let a man so account of us as the minister of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it's required in the stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged of you or men's judgment. Yet I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time. I thought about this verse a whole lot. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden thing of darkness and will make manifest the counsel of hearts and then shall every man have praise of God. Look at verse 9. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. And if I'm going to be a fool, I'll be a fool for Christ, don't you? This world thinks we're fools, I guess, in hell. But uh, notice verse 9, the last part. Well, in the first part, he said, I think that the Lord sent us the apostles. Now, we know he's talking about apostles. But uh, to uh, extend, I think, it could be applied to all Christians, everybody that's saved, for we're made a spectacle. And some of the old timers used to say, I've lost my spectacles. That's something you look through. And uh, so uh, uh, people's looking at me. They're looking at you. They're looking at all of us that really claim to be Christians, especially looking down. And so they made, made a spectacle in the world. That's them outside, don't know God. The angels, the uh, heavenly host, and then men, uh, like uh, uh, men of like faith as we are, but everybody, I think it tells here just in a nutshell, everybody is looking at us to see where we, what we say we are not. And uh, so may the Lord help us that we'll strive to be a real Christian. It's as if we were uh, on display to this world. And they don't read the Bible, and they most of them don't go to church, and so uh, they're just seeing how we do it, and where we're living up to par, and where we're being a real Christian or not. Paul said, Yea, and all that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Then he said, I reckon the suffering of this present time not even worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us one day after a while. So there will be some suffering. And uh, if we were on, I heard this saying many years ago, if we was on trial as a Christian, wonder if there'd be enough evidence to convict us. 
That's really something to think about. People just looking to us and judging us for what they see and what we say and how we conduct ourselves every day. Wonder if there'd be enough of the evidence to convict us as being a Christian. I don't know. I hope it would be. But the Bible said that we're known and read of all men. And so we need to realize that. This business of being a Christian is a very serious thing. No wonder Jesus said, you're the light of the world. Let your light shine before men that you see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. I think I heard somebody say something about here Sunday morning about uh, talking and one thing and walking is another. And uh, so uh, we need somebody that will walk right and uh, talk right and walk right. <laughs> Amen. And that's what the world's looking for. They've saw enough on us. I want to I want to talk about the word Christians. I said we use this too lightly sometimes, the word Christian. Serious matter about being a Christian. Representing the Lord. Representing old time religion. Representing the church. And uh, so uh, just to say you're a Christian is not good enough. We need to show somebody something out there. And uh, the Bible only makes a Christian three times. I, I, right quick I'll say this and it won't be long. First time because of what they saw. Second time because of what they said. And then the third time because of what they suffered. It's so only three times to my knowledge we find the word Christian in the Bible. You'd think it'd be in there more than that one. As far as I know the three times, the only time it meant Two times in Acts, one time in Peter, that it mentions the word Christian. The first thing, first they call them Christians because of what they saw. That's Acts eleven twenty six. And uh, they didn't call themselves Christians. If I understand it right, the world named them as Christians. They, they was walking and talking and living and acting like Christ. And they started calling them Christians. The Bible said they were first called Christians at Antioch. And so the name Christian passed on down through ages of time. And uh, we ought to live right out. I wonder what the world sees when they see us walk by. Do they see a real Christian? And uh, do they see something in our life that reminds them of a, the Lord, reminds them of church, or at least going to church, or something on that line, something about God? When they see us, I wonder what we remind them of. I've saw people, I'm not being hard, but I'm just being honest. I, I've started to say ladies, I don't say ladies, I just say women. I've saw some women that was out in, in such a garb in public that the last thing I'd think about is a Christian. But still they go to church and most of them say they're Christians. I tell you, this world's look, they can see through us, amen. And so I believe Christians ought to be a Christian wherever they go. Want to walk right. See that you walk circumspect and not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. And uh, we're to do right. We're to talk right, of course. We all know that. Some talk right when they're around church, but they get pretty foul mouth when they get out somewhere. But uh, that's not right. That's not a real Christian. We're, we're talking about real Christians tonight. And I remember, I, I don't tell much, but I don't say this, I was just, well, old enough to work, well, I was 18 or 19, I guess, and junior, my brother two year older than me. We got us a job over the spread house, and we was working the same place there, and, and there's two other fellows there's about 30 year old, that's older than we were. And uh, we, junior wasn't saved, he didn't get saved, he was, I don't know how old he was when he got saved, but I was done preaching before he got saved. And, uh, but uh, we was hauling the, uh, spreads from one building to another, one plant to another, and uh, had a you know one of these van trucks, and and uh, usually me and him we was you know kids at that time I guess, and we had to ride in the back. <laughs> a lot of people rode back them days, to be honest. But and them other fellows would ride up in the cab when them go, and we'd get in the back of that truck one day, and Junior looked over me, he said, "I ain't thought nothing about it, to be honest. Well, I was a church going fellow myself, you know how it is." And uh, but uh, he looked over me and said. I believe them fellows are Christians. And come find out, they both was Christians. And they went to church at Harley Creek Baptist Church up there at Chatsworth. 
and uh, it was uh, Ralph Falls and, and uh, Walter uh, uh, Rogers. And uh, them boys, them fellas, they're probably 30 year old, they live right. And that's one of the first things Junior noticed. They was different from others. It was different from the world. People notice that. They don't come up and tell you every time now. But uh, they notice where you're different from this old world or not. And our conduct, it ought to be, it ought to be right. When, when, when they had that shipwreck over there in uh, Acts chapter 27, and then chapter 28, and there's Bill of a fire, and there's one in that fire, and Paul's a prisoner, he's wet and cold. No doubt, he ought, if anybody would be warm before, it should have been him probably, or at least one of them. But he's out getting a bundle of sticks to kill that fire. Oh, God help us. We need to get a few, few sticks or something. Get things fired up around here. And he's gathering sticks. They looked at him. They said, well, this is a murder. Even though he got out of that sea alive, he's going to die anyhow. And they looked at him a while, and he shook that thing off in the fire and felt no harm. They changed their mind and said he was a god. And I wonder if we live close enough to God that, uh, and busy enough Christian like Paul was, and able to shake off harmful things in the fire instead of getting their feelings hurt and going home. But just shake them things off and go on from God. Amen. That's what a real Christian does. Right. And uh, I said it won't be long. Won't. But what they saw, they called them Christians. Then but what they said in Acts chapter 26 and verse 28, I believe it is. And uh, Paul reasonably rise his temper, judgment come. Felix stood before him, he trembled and said, go your way when I'm going to be seen, I'll call for you. Then he talked to a gripple too, King Gripple. Here's what he said. He said, almost, almost, thou persuadest me to be a Christian. That's right. And so our lives should persuade somebody else to want to be a Christian, live for God, love God, and serve God. So I said a while ago, the Bible said we're known and read of all men. And so we ought to try our best to be right and do right and say the right thing. And uh, you've heard people talk about people that they know, and, and I have too, and we don't like to talk about bad things, but it's just the truth. And, uh, you know, they're supposed to be Christian in the church house and around the preachers, and when they're with the preacher's crowds, you know. But they get out in the world, and they just turn, just turn a page or something. They're just a different person out there. That's not real Christianity. That's not a real Christian. That's a phony. That's a hypocrite. That's what the Lord called them. Yeah, pretty blunt, but that's what he said. He's a hypocrite. If you profess something you don't have, you're a hypocrite about it. And, uh, but uh, Paul, Lord, he's one of the best Christians probably read about in the Bible. And he, he begged people. He said, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercy of God. He begged them, the high, highways and hedges, and begged them to come in, get saved. He is burdened, Paul. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that go forth weeping and burning precious seeds shall doubtless come again and rejoice in bringing his sheaves with him. And here's a verse in Acts. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they took knowledge that they'd been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, people know my name or not, but I hope they notice I've been around the Lord. Amen. Hope they notice I've been fellowship, fellowshipping with him. And I know him, the Savior, the Lord of my life. And uh, so he, he was he begged him, he was burdened, but he had boldness. And we ought to be bold. Nothing to be ashamed about being a Christian. In fact, we ought to be thankful we're Christian. Amen. Amen. I know some better witness than others. Some talk to people about other things like that. But uh, I tell you, we ought to live right and say enough that they'll know we're Christian. That we're no, they'll know we're on the Lord's side. I may not be much, but I'm, I'm proud I'm on the right side. <laughs> then last of all, they called them Christian because of what they suffered. The Bible said in Peter 4, 16, If any man suffers a Christian, let him not be ashamed. That's what I was just saying something about. What many of let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. And so, uh, what to be willing to suffer as a Christian? You know, uh, for why? We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed, perplexed, not in despair, persecuted, not forsaken, cast down, but not strong. 
And Jesus said, Blessed are you when men shall revive, persecute all saw men of evil, get you fall for my sake. He said, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. That's, right. That's easy for me to stay up, sit up here and say that. Lord, I quote that verse a dozen times, I won't think much about it. But it's a whole lot harder putting shoe leather. Yes, sir. Rejoice when they persecute you, so all men of evil against you false. That's what the Lord said to do. Well, the disciples done that. You remember what they called them, put them in prison. They got the angel of the Lord delivered them, got them out. And they left the presence. They beat them, said, don't you talk and preach no more in this name. And they left the presence of the council rejoicing because they was worthy uh, to be caught, to, be, to suffer shame for Jesus Christ. And uh, so they was rejoicing about suffering as a Christian. Hard for us to do that again. Elijah, Daniel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Amos, John, Paul, all the disciples on and on through the Bible that suffered for the Lord. Real Christians do suffer sometimes. And uh, sometimes uh, because of living godly, sometimes they suffer physically and suffer different ways and mental and things like that. But I'm proud, whatever it may be, there's a blessing and a promise at the end of the journey if we'll live for God. Let's try to be a better Christian. What do you say? All of us. Me, you, everybody else. Let's try to be better. Let's try to live right where people will take note that at least we're different. Amen. may not be a preaching to them. It may not be a shining like we ought to, but we ought to be enough different saying, no, we're not of this old world. But we've been called out. The Bible said, uh, Peter 2 and 9, but you're a chosen generation of royal priests of the whole nation. A peculiar people. Why? That you should shew forth the praise of him who will call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for letting us be here tonight, this Wednesday night. Always a blessing to be the Lord's people. I'm proud to stand by in the house of God this evening for tonight. I pray your blessing upon each one. I pray the word of God. I know I didn't say much, but pray the word of God to be a challenge to all of us. Try to be a better Christian every day as the days go by. Oh God, I want to be a better Christian. I want to be closer to God. I want to love, love the Lord. And uh, walk close to the Lord in these last days. I, I know we're living the last days. And I know the time is short. And uh, so help us, Lord, that we'll take advantage of the time and redeem the time because the days are evil. But bless our people in a special way, Lord. Be they ever need this building. And then the ones that can't be here, you'd meet their need. Bless them. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Time to have